Will Crabtree here with the Gorilla Gurus and Tampa Printer for the Gorilla Gurus Marketing Happy Hour. Today we're here with Akash Patel and we are doing networking and Negronis. Uh, so Akash, welcome to the uh, the Marketing Happy Hour. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming by. It's awesome to see you. And then, of course, my co-host today is Mr. Terry Yannick. Uh, Terry stepping in for uh, for McMike today, yep. and uh, he's got a lot of experience with networking, so I yeah. think it'll be a great fit. Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> Likewise, Terry. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Uh, so I've never made a Negroni before, so this will be a uh, an experiment, and if it's bad, please be honest. Tell me. Now, Akash, you're 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 well versed in the Negroni, is that correct? I'm a Negroni fan. Okay. There's okay. a there's a one. I was in London not too long ago, and the server asked me if I wanted tequila in my Negroni, and I said sure. So okay. instead of gin, I had tequila Negroni, and I've been hooked ever since. Okay. So we've got a high bar set today, Will. All right, and we're doing <laughs> we're doing a bourbon Negroni today okay. instead of a uh, gin Negroni. You're taking me to the next level. I like it. Yeah. So you've done tequila. <laughs> now we're gonna do bourbon. Uh, there's a great spot in Hyde Park called Forbici that's great Negronis. I like Forbici. Forbici's good. Yeah. <clears throat> so I did read that you have to be very sparing with the uh, the Campari as well as the uh, the sweet vermouth, or it just becomes entirely way overpowering. And then since we're doing an orange, I'm actually going to throw a little bit of orange bitters in here too. So Terry, give us uh, give us a little bit of background on some of the experience that you have with uh, with networking. Uh, I know when we were working together, you were you were working the uh, the BNI circuit, but I'm sure you did some <laughs> yeah. other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, BNI is kind of like where you cut your teeth if you've never networked and you're really in a B two B space, um, and uh, it's it's a great kind of start into a job that requires having a heavy network, right? So the idea being, you get a room full of people and everybody's committed to trying to refer business to one another. Right. And, uh, I kind of picked up on that. I, I took to it very fast right? and they hold you accountable. Like you got to talk about who you refer to each other and you got to credit it. Right. You, I mean, you've got, you've got like an attendance policy, wow. right? You've got dues that, that have to be paid every quarter. Uh, you, you know, you have to be doing a certain amount of continuing education throughout the week, uh, and meeting with other members of the group. Right. So, uh, it, it, it becomes, you know, a, a large part of your week. It's not just one hour on Tuesday morning, which is a lot of people think that it is. You just show up and other people are going to hand you business. It's not that simple. Right. So I, I figured that out pretty quick. The more that, that I kind of immerse myself in this, this community and, 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 uh, this style of networking, the more it's going to yield results, which Turned out to be true, right? It, it it was great, and like I said, that first level of networking, um, you know, really it it really greases the wheel, right? Oh, yeah, because I could go in there and say I want to meet this person, and somebody in the room, if they couldn't get me that person, they they would get me somebody in that that same area, right? That they that they know, um, and uh, so so I got a lot of a lot of kind of knowledge and experience from that. And I started to apply that outside of the BNI group. Um, and, and networking took on a new phase for me right? where I could do it anywhere at any time. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually familiar with who you are. Uh, oh man, what I do. You, so, so all <laughs> no, good, right? It's funny. No, I'm like, he's like, who, who's going to be on the podcast? Take yeah. a cautious. He goes, who, do you know who you have on the podcast? <laughs> so, so, so you helped. I I serve on the board of of Cure Kids Cancer oh, now. Oh, great cause. Yeah, client. Yeah. Yep. So so uh, you know Monica and and Ryan Angel are very close friends of yeah. mine. And uh, and I was over. I was I was doing something with the website and talking to Monica, and she was just raving about about you, yeah. right? And I was like, well, at, and at the time, this is when I'm like heavily networking focused, mm -hmm. right? Not so much anymore, but at the time, all I do is is you know, meetups and chamber of commerce events and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and I'm like, man, you know, sounds like Akash is doing what I do at just a way higher level. Right. And that's what she said. She was yeah. like, yeah, no, that's it. It's just at a different level, same kind of concept and principle. I ask him, you know, to connect me in, in these different ways and he hasn't let me down once. Right. So that's a great testimonial, you know, and, I got to call her and thank her. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and listen, you know, for me, like I said, they're very close friends of mine. I was there through the whole period of time that led to 
that foundation being created. So I'm grateful for what you were able to do for the foundation and Monica and, and everybody. So I've never had a chance to thank you. So thank uh, you so of course. much. It's a great cause and they're great people, great family. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, Tampa has been a great, uh, to me, I moved here 15 years ago and just got involved. Just like you said, you just meet a couple people that connect you here. And then I always just said, okay, well, I'm not doing much right now. Cause this is when I was thinking out where, where is I going to go with my life? I tried to go to law school. I took my LSATs and I thought that was going to be a lawyer. And then it turned out where it, when I was studying, I wasn't working and I just had some savings and I just was meeting with people for a coffee. And I was like, they're like, well, do you know, so and so I was like, yeah, I'll connect you guys. And that's like before LinkedIn kind of like made mm-hmm. that happen too. Right. And then a couple of my friends were like, man, you did a really great job. Um, I made some, some deals and you know, can I, can I give you, can I pay you? I'm like, wait, what? You can make money off this thing. Like, I'm just helping you out. And so, you know, I have a, you know, one thing I tell people that they're starting a business and it doesn't matter what business will, you know, this mentors are great. Absolutely. And everyone has different mentors, different industries, could be your family, could not be family, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I had some mentors who said, you know, put, put this in writing, what you're going to do, put in writing. And so I just put it in writing. And then that was nine and a half years ago. And it's a blessing. And you're on the board of like everything, right? Like, I know you're on the board of the Greater Tampa. You're on the board of South Tampa. You're on the board of not the- on the board of South Tampa, just an active oh, member. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, there's like a chamber conflict. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> you can't be on the board of two different chambers. Got it. Yeah. But you're on the board of Center Club, formerly Center Club, now Tampa Club. Now Tampa Club. Yep. Okay. Uh, visit Tampa Bay. Advisory board there, yes, sir. Okay. What What am I missing? Where else are you on the board? Leadership of? Tampa Bay, which I was the past secretary and alum, and I just got appointed by the governor to serve on the Hillsborough Community College Board of Trustees, as well as I chair the Early Learning Coalition of Hillsborough County. Wow. So. Yeah, seven seven boards are fun, but you know that the interesting thing is every board has a purpose and every time you go to a board meeting you meet someone new who you didn't really know what they did. So you learn about it and it's just networking in itself. Right. Yeah. Well, let's uh let's let's try these things out. So cheers. cheers. Thank, Thank you, you guys for joining cheers. me here. Yeah. All right. Strong. Oh yeah, it is strong. It is it is good. No, I don't have anything to compare it to because I'm not a Negroni guy. What yeah. What do you think? Be honest. Be honest. I mean, it is like you're drinking whiskey or bourbon, sorry, straight. It's good. Okay. It's good. I um, mean, I'm I'm an old fashioned guy, so yeah, it's, you know, I kind of made it like an old fashioned. It's, it's a guy. I was gonna say it tastes like an old fashioned. I had a really good one on, on Saturday night. It was great. Right on. But it's drinkable, right? Oh yeah. Now I, you know, well, you and I talked about this. My favorite old fashioned is the smoked ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so like the smoked old fashioned. If you little smoke in this, that'd be great. I could have done the smoke that next time. Next, next podcast. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that next time. Um, well, all right. Well, with that being the case, let's go ahead and retire to the lounge and then we can uh, actually talk about some business. Um, so again, I'm here with, uh, Mr. Terry Yannick and, and Akash Patel. Uh, what we like to do in this podcast is be informative, right. And give people advice. So I would I would bear to say that you are the leading expert in Tampa Bay for networking. Like you are the guy. If you talk to anybody in Tampa Bay about networking or if you talk to anybody about you, everybody knows you. So for somebody that is is just now trying to they're just starting a business, they don't know anything about networking, where would they start? What would you what would be the advice that you would give them? First of all, thank you for the compliment. I'm very blessed. Um you know, set goals. Goals are important in life for all sorts of reasons. But I tell this to, I mean, you look at the pandemic and you look at people who are used to going out to events, whether it's BNI or whatever it is, and you can't go and talk to people. So what I did is I set goals for myself every day. I went on LinkedIn and I just reached out to 10 people every day and say, Hey, how are you doing? You know, everyone was affected differently. And initially it was a shock to everybody. Right? So if you're starting a business today, set a goal for yourself. How many customers do you want in that month? How many people are you going to touch uh, by reaching out in that week? So whatever the number is, it's your choice. But if you don't set the goal right, you're not going to do it. And then when you're setting the goal, also follow up. So for instance, people say, you know, I sent a LinkedIn message. You probably heard this. I sent a LinkedIn message and they never responded. Doesn't mean they don't want to talk to you or do business with you. You got to follow back up. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, make sure you set a goal and then follow up and make it a routine. So I block off 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. just for follow-ups. And again, if you keep a track of it, whatever system you use, you can use Word, you can use Excel, you can use a software or app, whatever it is. Every week, you should have a follow-up list anyway. Right. And um, and and if you keep it routine, and that, that's the other thing is keep it routine. So, and I I time when I'm going to make a social media post every day at 11 a.m. just before people go to lunch. Guess what? They have a craving for social media. So, post on Facebook, LinkedIn, 
Twitter, whatever your platform, Instagram, do it, but keep it routine. And I know people's you know lives have changed now because of what's going on, but try to stick to it. And then this way at the end of the week, look at what you've done and see what's been successful and, and, and give yourself credit. So social media still plays an important role in the networking process, right? Because networking is really more about the face to face, going to the events. But I know like I go to the happy hour and I've had a couple drinks and you start talking shit with people. We can cuss, by the way. So I'll try to keep it down so you can share it with other people. Um, (laughs) But uh, (laughs) the the website one, we were flying. But last Last week, we we, we didn't cuss at all. Um, But no, so... um, you know, you start talking trash and you talk business and you can only go so far and it's like, oh, well, let's connect or let's grab lunch or let's do whatever. Um, but if you're not reaching back out to make that connection with them and to schedule that lunch or to schedule whatever, it's just up in the ether and it's nothing but talking, you know, talking mm-hmm. trash. Um, but is social media the platform to do that reach reach back? Is is Should you send a Facebook message? Should you send a LinkedIn message or should you reach out by the phone, email or are you going to be a stalker and send it on all of the above? See, I do a little bit differently. I say, look, if you're not doing anything wrong, let's take a photo. Mm-hmm. So if you're at an event and you like talking to somebody and it was an event that was sponsored by tamperprinter.com or Gorilla Marketing Gurus, right? Take a picture with you and that person if they're allow- if they're allowing it. Mm-hmm. First, first ask for permission <laughs> and post it on LinkedIn, tag them and tag their company and give them a shout out. Okay. Great meeting, Terry. What's your company's name? Uh, I'm with Synergy One Lending now. Great meeting, Terry. West Energy One Lending. Thank you, Will Crabtree, for introducing us. Now, everyone in my network sees that I've tagged Terry. Everyone in your network sees that I've tagged you. And again, we're taking it to the next level because what's going to happen? That person who I took a photo with is going to be like, wow, you know what? I should sit down with this guy. Yeah. And when they offer to sit down with, if you're not comfortable because whatever reason, just do a phone call. But the point is, there's you're not going to get business done in that first interaction at that event. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you've got to do a follow-up. Right. So whatever, whatever gets you to the next meeting, gets you to the next meeting. I'm just easy phone picture post and you can do it right there. And then, so you don't forget. Yeah. No, or I schedule that time the next day. I like the post a lot. That's, it, that's a really good idea. It's content creation. You're, you're interacting with the person that you just met. Like, I mean, it's genius, man. It's great. So when you talk about guerrilla marketing, yeah. like that's, that's real guerrilla marketing right there. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that's the old school kind of hacking the system. Where in a lot of these cases, you're reaching networks that you didn't have access to before, but you didn't even have to really, I mean, you have to get permission for the photo, right? But beyond that, do you need to get permission to post that photo on no, as long, again, as long as it's not inappropriate or, or, right. or some plagiarism, but I'm thinking out loud. I mean, you think about it, people have this social, emotional, uh, what is it called? Fear of missing out. Yeah, FOMO. yeah, FOMO. So you post that. Now I'm in a picture with Will, and you're like, "Damn, why was I not in a picture?" That's so why don't. Well, you don't do business with a cash. Well, then you better do business and get in that picture. <laughs> that's it exactly. That's what I was thinking. Like, wow. You're, you're and you'll really be surprised. Deep. People are like, I know you because you post all. That. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly me. Yep. No, I like that a lot. That's really good. It breaks the ice too when you go to events and you know you're, you're a good branding guy because you wear the same shirt every time. Yeah. But again, that's a brand. You're right. wearing. I normally have a lapel pin. I don't have it today, but. People know your brand and your brand is your identity on social media. You should be you. Right. Right. No, I like that. See, and I, I always feel I'm always awkward at events. Like, and that's why I like going to events with you because you'll take me around and be like, oh, will. And you do that icebreaker for me. So that icebreaker is what really kind of gets me going. But I'm not good at like just walking up to random people and just starting to talk to them. It's just not me. <laughs> well, there's a, you know, again, everyone has to, to have feel a comfort level when mm-hmm. you're talking to somebody. For, for me, it's just like, what is the absolute worst that can happen when you introduce yourself? They don't want to talk to you. Right. And then you just go to the next person because there's plenty of other people that want to talk to you. It has nothing to do with rejection. Like I could care less if you don't want to talk to me. I just, I just don't. I just, it's not my thing. Like if I don't have something and again, this is a weird kind of framing because I guess I do have something to sell, but it's like, I don't want to be the guy that's just always out pitching to people. So just having a natural conversation, I'm not good at having a natural conversation if I don't have something to sell or if I don't have something to pitch. Yeah. So, so I, I, I focused on that in my networking, right? The first conversation not being business related. Mm-hmm. I didn't even like to tell people who I worked for, right? I wanted the conversation to be as as uh, as organic as possible, right? So I would pick out something silly to talk about. So at chamber events, right? You, you always have somebody who's like doing way too much, right? For their for their branding and their marketing, whatever it is, and that I would use that, right? Like see that guy does that work right and like not in a you know i wouldn't like 
you know, talk bad about the people, but I would, you know, like, let's talk about that. Right. Like, does that work? You know, have you ever done business with them? Are they, are they and these are, I wouldn't even ask their name. I wouldn't tell them my name. I would right. just start talking to them. Like I knew them for a long time. Right. And that's, that's what everybody would say is you talk to people like you've known them forever. My wife hates it. Right. I do, especially in restaurants. Right. Yeah. That's where I'm like, I shine at a restaurant. Right. A, because I've just eaten three appetizers, two entrees and four desserts. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's just how I eat. <laughs> so the owner's curious to begin with. Right. But I just start talking to them like we've known each other for so long and I don't go straight to the pitch, whatever it is. Right. right? I allow that to take place either later on in the conversation when they ask or in that follow up that you were talking about um, and face to face networking. And, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Business cards, obviously, we believe business cards are important. Big right? business card guy, yep. So I would, throughout the week, I'd create a stack on my desk. And then the following week, I would go through that stack and make contact with those people. Right. So I do a 24-hour rule. You have a 24-hour rule. Here's why. People have short-term memory issues. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Out of sight, out of mind. Think about, just think about what you did last uh, Tuesday to today. Oh. You've done a lot, right? Or even to Friday to today, right? Right. So my theory on that is, um, is follow up in the 24 hours again and schedule that time ahead of time so you know you're going to an event. The other thing is you mentioned uh, you mentioned chamber events. Who are, this is a pop quiz? Can I do a pop quiz? Yeah, absolutely. Who are the two most important people at that event that you're going to meet that you should meet? Say hello to any any chamber of commerce. Just think of a happy hour we went to at Western Alliance upstairs. Who are the two most important people? Um, the venue host and the person from the chamber that's representing the chamber. What do you say? I would say the venue host and the new member. So you guys are both. Half correct. Okay. It's the sponsor. The okay. person writing the check who's underwriting the event, right? Because they they write in the check to get to know everybody. And yes, the organizer. Because the organizer knows everyone's names. Okay. Right? So again, if you, you just said you a stack of cards, well, what if you, the other person didn't have a card? Right. You email the organizer the next day, hey, I didn't get so-and-so's contact. Can you share it? They'll share it. Right. And then the sponsor literally wrote a check to get thanked. That is literally what they wrote a check. That's what they do. <laughs> That's their own goal. That's it. And and you'll they be amazed. Any banker or any any law firm that sponsors an event, they're like, yeah, I didn't get my value because no one thanked me. Mm. Mm. I mean, okay. they want business out of it, right? Which sure. is the point of it. But so my point to your networking is a twenty four hour rule. But I, when I get somewhere, and you know, like you said, you don't see your name yet. You don't have to. But the organizer knows your name. Right. You cannot hide. And the best is when the organizer takes you to meet the sponsor. Right. Hey, right. I just got here. I'm you know I'm Terry. Can I meet the Verizon who's sponsoring this? Oh, sure. Come on over. Right. Right. And I guarantee you, you'll get a meeting the next week with that sponsor. It's that easy. Because no one does it. Yeah. You're right. You know, it's one of those things where we think everyone's right. going to thank the sponsor. No one does it. No. In, in most of those events, you find the people who have been networking for years together and they're off in a little group. Right. By mm -hmm. themselves. And, and you have those pockets, right. Of almost like, you know, throw it back like high school clicks. It right? doesn't click. You're exactly yeah. right. You see it, you see it happen in, in like these professional business environments often. And, uh, and that, that's, that's very challenging. So, so I did a little like research when, when, you know, I was with tampaprinter.com full time and, and learned about body language in networking events. Right. So if you have two people who are sitting kind of like you and I, right. Shoulders, our shoulders are, are together, but we're open it's a good opportunity to present yourself and introduce yourself. Right. However, so I should come up and just present myself to you. Hello. Correct. <laughs> it, it, it properly, you know, appropriately. Well, right. but <laughs> yes. However, if we're face to face, right. Our shoulders are squared off to one another. That's not a group that you want to walk up and introduce yourself to. They're having a private conversation. And I started to pick up on those little, like that, that minutia in networking events. And uh, what you'll see often is it, what I would see often was four guys standing and they're all standing kind of like this right? where they're facing a crowd of people and oh i asked you oh you did you warned me <laughs> somebody needs to feed the squirrels at home right now that's what that is i apologize um but you find like a group of four guys who are open to the crowd and i always found that the easiest to work with right because if one of them doesn't respond well i can get one of four people Right. To have a conversation with me. Right. So my thinking on the clicks is I, when I, I literally drive someone on my team to an event sometimes. Okay. And I'll say, don't talk to me for the next two hours. Okay. And I set a goal for myself, right? I need to meet 10 new people. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a good conversation with Will, Hey, thanks, but let's finish this tomorrow. Cause I got right. to go to meet 10 other people. 
And again, you're going to get somebody who's going to talk long winded and tell you the life story. Hey, th this is not, this is not the time to talk like that. Mm -hmm. And so I try to meet 10 people because if you try to meet 10, you'll meet five. Right. Right. And the clicks thing, and if, if they're at a networking event and they're, they're, they're closed off, I interrupt them. Do you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Because he here's the right deal. Yeah, he because here's right the in. deal. Why would, this is just me thinking out loud. I could do a lot of things after work. Right? right. I could do a lot. We can all do a lot of things. We have families and we have life. Right. You're going there to get business. Right. So I need to go get business. And by the way, they need to get business. Otherwise, why are you there? Yeah. You know, and I, and I have a huge issue with people that go to the same events with the same people all the time and don't get business. So I ask every time I have a client and Will knows this, I said, Hey, look, was this a value to you? Did you meet five new people? No. Well, why are you? And I, I don't say this to him because he's a great client, but why do you pay me? You pay me to meet new people. I took you to an event. Did you meet new people? No, I talked to the same five people. I don't, you know? So I guess my theory on this is the same, same as business, right? Once you get a customer, like you got a customer, the customer's happy. You got to retain them, mm -hmm. but then you still need new customers. Right. So what you could do and what I tell people is reward your customer by taking them to an event with you. The best testimonial is someone who's next to you. I take Will to something. He talks me up. I'm done. I, I'm sold. I'm glad I can go home. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is it is when we have this a lot, because like I said, you've now worked with us for a few months and you've done business for one of our clients, right? Yeah. Champa Bay, right? So now they're with you. They're with me. They're going to talk you up on your logo design. Right. No, and it, it's, it's all reciprocal. So, you know, even if you've built that relationship from being at the networking event and having someone there, but I also like the idea of actually taking a client with you. So pulling out one of your rock star clients, just saying, Hey, I'd like to take you out for drinks tonight. We're gonna go to an event. Uh, you might be able to get some business, you know, maybe not throw in the word networking just cause it kind of has a little bit of a stain in, in some environments. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you know, you associated with some organizations that we won't mention in that, uh, in that sentence, but, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I think that's, it's very powerful and there's, there's a, a lot of opportunity in doing that and, and taking, um, a client out and, and showing them a good time and taking them to an event. Um, but while we're talking about specific organizations, how, how do you feel about, and I, I don't want to single out BNI cause there's like three other ones in the market yeah. and they're all kind of starting to break out. What's, what's your take on places and, and organizations well, like when that? I ran for office, I ran for office and lost in 2018. I did go to a lot of BNI type groups. Mm -hmm. And again, for, for the industry that I was meeting realtors, financial advisors, bankers, it's great, great, because they really don't have a, what do you call a, a filter? Because anyone can anyone needs their services. Mm -hmm. So I think those organizations exist for those kind of individuals. For me, I, I mean, again, I, I, I'm thinking out loud. When I was running for office, I needed votes, right? So I needed to meet everyone who's a voter. And it was great because I got petition signed. It was awesome. I think it does do a great justice for holding you accountable as a person for any type of marketing or business you're in. But however... You also want to meet with, you know, and I say this in the right way, is like you want to meet with companies and business people that are going to be long-term customers. And the best way I can describe it is we have a restaurant client and we do, we, we do coupons and you send, a, you send a gift card to the, to the household, right? You buy a mm -hmm. list. Well, you get the coupon and you're going to go in and redeem it, right? And then you're going to come back, right? That's our yeah. hope. Right. I feel like sometimes when you go to these other networking groups, they just take the coupon, use it once and don't come back. Right. And the, and the thing is, is like, that's a clientele. It does serve a purpose for an immediate risk need. It's a great business for, for me, I want the longer term customer because I build on the relationship. I'm better now that you're with you with me for six months and we'll be friends for years rather than the one time I uh, sign me up and here's my check and then peace out. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it just personal preference because some people love being, I have good friends that make up at 7am every Tuesday and I go with them sometimes to be and I, and they love it. I'm like, that's your, that's what you want. Right. But they're also a personal injury lawyers. So, yeah, so that's their great, bread and butter. It's a bread and butter. So it's yeah. great for that, right? Yeah. So so it's just different mentality. My mentality is sure. longer term relationship will always win. That's just me. Sure. Right. Right. And and it is, it's it's a little more difficult to develop a long term relationship in that environment, right? So if you look at the big real estate office that you've been working with that I was able to bring us a few years back, um I, I don't know if they're still a client. I know they've gone through through some restructuring, mm -hmm. but from the day that the day that I was able to meet their team leader uh, until, you know, as far as I know, you know, that, that office worked directly with you, but that it wasn't as easy as just taking that BNI referral and, and taking one order. Right. It took a lot of work and, and, and there a was lot lots of, of meetings and lots of meetings and follow-ups and, yeah. and 
really earning earning their trust in their business. Now it yielded a great result, right? That the the thing is though is with those groups, and I think why small businesses find them to be so impactful and important to them is getting that introduction to to that team leader kind of difficult to do, right? Yeah. I didn't know another route to meet that person. I didn't, you know, and I just happened to have a, a fellow BNI member who had a great relationship with them, right? And I, they were able to sell me at least enough to where I, I had an opportunity to go sell tampaprinter.com, right? right? And so I think they served that purpose, but I agree 100%. A lot of the business that we did out of there was very transactional. Oh, it was right? transactional and it was transient. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't been a part of the organization for, because when you left, I took over your seat and Correct. then I was going, so I was the one going to the meetings and I wanted to shove a fork in my eye, <laughs> but I did it anyway. And I, I met some really great people and I made sure. some cool friends out of it. You've been one um, of our clients, Rose was, that's how you met Rose. Yeah, that's how I yeah. met Rose, uh, the, the contractor that did the build out on the building. Mm-hmm. I used to use the guy in the group and that's great. You know, there was, there was resources that I was able to utilize and I, I put so much money into the group just from spending my own money for transactions and for, for services that I would have used and then kind of going back to the clickish thing, like, you know, we got booted out, basically. I I <laughs> I was leaving, but I was passing my seat to one of my other team members. They still have not filled that seat in that group <laughs> with somebody else. Everybody in that group crosses their lines. Nobody stays in their lanes. Mm-hmm. But I crossed a line for one other member that affected <laughs> one. That they wouldn't have gotten the business anyway, but they got salty and they kicked me out. So not only Kool-Aid and redundant, horrible presentations that you have to sit sure. through every time, but then also like hyper clicky and hyper political with the most ridiculous mundane politics that you can imagine. Yeah. And and th- that's the big downfall, right? Is mm-hmm. in, in, in a perfect world, right? None of that would exist in an organization like that. And it would run, you know, without issue. We don't live in that. Right. And, and, there's now you see all these breakouts and, and networking taking on a new face, right? Especially since, you know, for the last 18 months, right? Networking has changed substantially. Right? Yeah, I just wrote an op-ed in the Tampa Business Journal about the new world of networking. Right. You're going to see more people give digital business cards than ever. Yeah. I know yeah. you already do that. Uh, I think more people are going to travel less for conferences yep. Yep. because virtual options have to happen. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's networking. Well, you're doing a trade show this week, right? I mean, thank God we're doing trade shows, but you know people are not going to be shaking hands. Right. Imagine trying to, you have a booth at a trade show and no one's going to shake your hand. Strange. You can't have a demo product out yep. because everybody's going to pick it up and touch, touch it. Touch it. And then and then the other thing is the brochures. Right. What are you going to give out? You can't you can't give out brochures. I mean, you can. And people you can, but, are. But people, yeah. But, you know, people are going to be reluctant to take them. Um, just have hand sanitizer all over the place. I mean, come on. Like, I mean, yeah, so that's the that's the down and dirty option, right? We've seen some really interesting stuff come out of this, though. If you look at what Stan Laboratory is doing with V-Summits, like very interesting adaptation to oh, yeah. this, you know, new way of networking and events and things like that. And and I've been watching that, right? Like, what is that scene taking on? It, are people going to, from the comfort of their home, go to this weekend long trade show digitally? Right. And, and how long is that going to hold up for and, and if you look at it, I think it's mainly like Florida, maybe Texas is right there with us. People are dying to get back out into these events. They are. They, and, they can't and, wait. And I mean, trade shows are, are the big, big ones. Most of them still canceled for, for 2021. Right. Some of them are trying to reschedule into 2022, maybe later in the year. But the earlier ones are still kind of out. Uh, I mean, printing just as a prime example, all of the printing trade shows in 2021 have been canceled. There was supposed to be one in Orlando this week. Uh, It's one of the biggest national ones. People travel from all over the world. Every piece of equipment, vendor, manufacturer that you can imagine across garment, wide format paper, they're all there. Mm -hmm. Done. Canceled. Shot. Gone. But as somebody that needs to look at equipment to determine whether or not I'm going to buy that equipment... That's why those trade shows are very powerful. And looking at something on a screen, I'm not going to make a $150,000 equipment purchase <laughs> decision by seeing I need to see it in person. I need to stress test it. I need to put some paper through it. Or I need to put some, you know, whatever through it. 
and actually see it in person. But you know, trade show aside, there is networking that goes on at those events too. But then even also, you know, you're talking about the digital business cards and people not passing out materials or having demo things or all of that. I think that it's all there. I mean, there's going to be brochures, there's going to be demo products, all that stuff is going to be available. It's more up to the person that's attending the event to decide on whether or not they're going to engage with that. Like, right. I'm not going to pick up a brochure because I'm worried that someone else may have touched that brochure. Or I'm not going to pick up the demo product because all of these other people have been handling it. And it'll be, you know, 50, 50, 60, 40. Some people will, some people won't. So you're saying 50, where do you see that transition going? Where do you, where do, like the, the long-term effects of, of what we experienced, I'll say here in Tampa, right? For a, a solid nine months, yeah, yeah. right? We kind of got on board, you know, unanimously in the city and, and agreed to certain new ways of life. Social distancing, masks, and no no in person events. Right, I would for the say most for part. the last nine months, we're kind of breaking out of that. Right? Oh yeah, rapidly. for sure. Since March, since I got vaccinated in March, I think we definitely broke it out. Okay, yeah, you're yeah. right. It's the last six months. I'm yeah. I'm in the same boat. So so where are we headed? Well, the problem is now you you cannot go away with the option. Now that I know that I can do an eight a.m. Zoom and don't have to fight traffic in downtown, I'll take the eight a.m. Zoom meeting all day. Now I don't want that. I want to meet the people in the board meetings, but you know what the organizer says? It saves them a lot of money on logistics right so for from a board meeting standpoint i think it makes sense yeah. and even like i mean the bnis like if they did the bni meeting virtually for all of the kool-aid and, and did like a half meeting in person where you're actually networking i'm sure that works yeah. yeah but uh yeah i mean i think i think that there's there's something to be said about meeting in person right like i've done zoom meetings working Not with you wazoo, right yeah yeah, let's grab lunch or let's do happy hour. Oh, well, Zoom's more convenient for me. Okay, Zoom, great. Like we sit down and we talk on Zoom for 20, 30 minutes. Uh, I don't really feel like much has been accomplished from those from those calls. Right. The great people to connect with and nice to meet them, you know, but you know, there's something that there's something about meeting in person and engaging it's with somebody. It's the body in language that Terry yeah. talked about. It's the relationship. But I will tell you, here's what the test is going to be in December. You're used to the first two weeks of going to every freaking person's holiday party. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about your friends. I'm talking about business owners. They're doing open houses. They're doing ribbon cuttings. It's always the first couple weeks of December, okay? Mm -hmm. We missed it last year. So you're going to double down this year. Mm -hmm. Right. And everyone is going to go. There's not one person that's not going to go. Even if they were in hibernation right now or even through Thanksgiving, they're going to want to go to a holiday party because they miss holiday parties. Right. And that'll be the test to see if people network because that's, that's prime networking for us. 100%. Every CEO waits to work all year and they'll go to a holiday party at a law firm, no matter what. Yep. And we get clients every year from holiday parties. So the thing is, is now, is it going to be too many people? And are you going to see a spike? And there's so many questions around it. Yeah. That is interesting. So, so you're saying your, 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 your uh, thoughts on the matter are to be determined around mid December. Correct. But yeah. I'm telling clients, like I told a client today, I said, don't do a December holiday party. Interesting. Do it in January. Whoa. Because why? Your calendar fills up right now. In it's book. I mean, I did just book two events right now for December 3rd and 4th today for my clients. And I said, do it in January when no one, you're competing with no holiday parties. Call it a New Year's celebration. Call it a 2022 kickoff. Call it a COVID relief or really uh, COVID is over. celebration. whatever you want to call it, Brandon, you're the branding expert. I'm just telling you. That my, your calendar, my calendar is going to be slammed the first two weeks of December because every bank you've ever done business with, every law firm, every financial advisor, they're going to do a celebration. Yep. And that is going to cause a lot of stress for people. Yeah. It's going to be all over the place. Networking World Series. That, I mean, that's what we're looking at. Right? right. Especially here. And I think if 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 the viewer's not, not down here in Florida, right? I have a lot of friends in the Northeast. Uh, still. You know, I had lunch with people from Connecticut that just moved here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's northeast is, is closed. It's closed. Yeah, and and it's so it's so hard for me to wrap my head around. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have friends in in the New York, Connecticut, uh, Massachusetts areas, and I tell them what I'm out doing. Right, and they're like, "Are you crazy?" Right. I'm like, "No, I don't think so. Maybe I am." <laughs> and and I, I I scuba dive a lot. Right. And what I'm finding in South Florida on boats, time and time and time again is that it's people from the Northeast and the Northwest, right? right? So the state of Washington. And, and you're in Southeast Florida, right? Jupiter, West Palm Beach. These people have literally traveled across the country to get away from, you know, what they have going on there. 
and it's not necessarily that they they don't care about COVID or they're not scared of COVID. It's just that they've had enough. They yeah. can't continue to to do what they're doing there. Well, as as human beings, we need <clears throat> excuse me. As human beings, we need the interaction. There's mm-hmm. there's a there's an exchange of energy that goes with being in a room of people and and talking to them. And when you become reclusive, unless you're <laughs> truly a recluse, if that's something that you're used to getting and 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 engaging in. You know, it, it becomes almost a, uh, you start jonesing for it. And right. these people that have been on lockdown for however long they've been on lockdown, they're, they're ready to get out and see the world. They need and it. that's why we've had so many people moving, we, moving to Tampa. It's a thousand people a day. Yeah. Is that right. where we're at? A thousand people a day. A third moved to Tampa Bay area. So a thousand I, people a day moved to Florida. A third people of them to in Florida. Tampa Bay area. A third I, of I, them are in Tampa. I just yeah. saw that we're second behind Houston, Texas for fastest growth in the country right now. I could see that, and then we're we're the one of the emerging cities in technology. And and I think with when you look at Houston, Texas, if you were to look at it like per capita, I would say that we're outpacing them. Right, that's a much larger yeah, city. Texas oh yeah, Houston is Tampa. huge. Yeah, Houston is huge. Right. Well, two international airports there. I mean, they've got a little right. bit more stuff than we do. But but remember, we have more education here. We have a lot more right. universities. I'm on the board of the community college here. Mm-hmm. We have forty seven thousand students at our community college, which is, <laughs> and and I think Hillsborough Community College is is. Absolutely top notch. Oh, right. absolutely. Yes. In terms of community college, it is top notch. We are we are doing nursing now. We've got a welder program. I just took a congressman this morning to, with our president to see the welding program. I mean, what I'm what I'm thinking out loud is we have 22 million people in Florida, and we're on right. That's how many citizens we have here. I think we're on pace to be one of the largest states in America. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which yeah. is it, it's astounding because. If you so you've been here nine and a half years, you said my like, business has fifteen years. I've been living here. Fifteen years yeah. you've lived here. You've been here fourteen, right? 14 almost fourteen. Yeah. yeah. So so I grew up here, right? We moved here when I was about seven years old. So Oldsmar was nothing but trees. Right? Okay. Uh, South Tampa was not very populated, right? It was just where the rich people lived, right? And then right on the other side of the rich people was like the other side of the railroad tracks. You know, <laughs> uh, Brandon was like a forest, right? And to see where where we've gotten in my lifetime, right? And I still consider myself young. Right? Relatively. In, in 30 years, I've watched this transformation oh. that's like, oh What about downtown? God. Downtown? Downtown's unrecognizable from 10 years ago. And downtown's yeah. unrecognizable from five years ago. Yeah, I mean, really it is. was a ghost town it really five is. years ago. My favorite quote about downtown is there used to be 600 people that lived in downtown. Right. All in the jail. <laughs> Morgan Street Jail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now there's 6,000 people living downtown. It's yeah. crazy. Yep. So, but yeah, so you've been a Tampanian and now you'll never leave. No. And, and you know, it's funny. I moved, I moved back to Philadelphia, right? My family's from Philadelphia. I'm from South Jersey. Okay. So right, right up the street. You, okay. I woke up in Camden quite a few times. Not sure how I got yeah, there. I was in <laughs> Cherry right? Hill, but Camden. Yeah. Same, yeah. <laughs> same thing. Um, so, so, you know, I moved up there. And I, I was in West Philly for like two months, right? Baltimore and 53rd. Okay. If, if none of that makes sense to you, just think about the Fresh Prince intro. Yeah. That's the, dice, the neighborhood. The dice like, in the mirror. Like I lived in the neighborhood and- uh, I'm and, more of a boy meets world, but it was still Philly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I moved into Chinatown, okay, right? Okay, I know Chinatown. So right up the street, uh, you know, right in the, in the middle of Center City. And at the time I thought, <clears throat> this is where I want to be, right? right? Here- D.C., Boston, Philly, or uh, New York, something like that. The big city life as a, as a 22-year-old like really appealed to me. And then I moved back down here, and, and I met my wife, and she said, uh, we have one rule. We have to live in South Tampa. And I was like, all right, we'll, Done. we'll test it out, right? We'll check it out. And within a couple years of being in South Tampa, it like it clicked. I was like, yeah, we have to live in South Tampa. There's not There's not an option. So with the real estate boom that Tampa's experienced, right, where living in South Tampa is like very hard to afford, yeah. you know, like it, 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 I watched it blow up like to, to a crazy, you know, uh, market value while Riverview is still affordable and we're building all this transportation to, to make that more accessible. It was like, no, you know, and all my friends, right. All my peers moved to to Riverview or New Tampa, Tampa Palms, Wesley Chapel. Now they're like Lando Lakes and Zephyr Hills. They just keep getting further away. Like, no, we're staying right here in South Tampa and I can't leave. Sound like Will over here. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I You would have to pay me a lot of money to move anywhere outside of Tampa. 
And as long as I'm still working, I will I will live in South Tampa. Yeah. People are knocking on people's door today and offering, say, name your price. Your, your house is for sale. Right. They're literally just knocking on your door. Yeah. That's how good the market is here. That's crazy. It's great. It's horrible for people that are renting, though. The renting well, market. The and rental I bought market a house is, in December. I'm getting married in a few weeks. And that, that is why I bought a house. And I'm thankful I did because yeah. I couldn't. I mean, it was an off-market deal. Someone told me the house was for sale. I knew the agent. And I, I went and I went and got lucky. But and that, that came that. from networking, right? Came from networking. It was actually wow. a networking Zoom party <laughs> of where I found the house. I was at someone's house watching a Zoom, which why would I go to their house? I'm like, it's not we would have been at the event, right? But there's no, there, and then they were like, hey, the neighbor's house is for sale. The people that own the par- house. I'm like, all right, I'll call the seller's agent because I didn't have an agent. Yeah. And I knew the seller's agent from networking. Nice. Wow. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'll just let you, I'll let your offer go in first. And I, I won. That easy. You shouldn't, you, you know, so uh, I'm, I talk to buyers, right? This is what I do now. You should probably keep that story under wraps. There are people who have been, they've made 25 offers and haven't even gotten one considered, right? right? Like not even a, you know, accepted. And then something happens in the inspection period where it doesn't work out. I have people that have made 25 offers on homes above asking offers. Oh, easily. But mine was cash offer. So it's different. Okay. And and, and it had to be cash. It had had to be be cash. cash. So, so you think about this is December. So people were still in flux of what the market was Mm -hmm. or no, I closed in December. So this was November. Mm-hmm. It was actually a couple of days before Thanksgiving. So I think I got him on like a really dead date where they're like, no one putting in. And that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, but but that's the, the only radar. way you can do it though right now. I mean, right. you have to do cash and you have to do it at the right time. Yep. Yeah. And if you have financing, it's got to be, it's got to be conventional. Right. It's got to be above asking. It's crazy what's so, happening. Uh, and, and I don't mean to interrupt and I, I want to reel it back in just a little bit because yeah. last week's uh, podcast was um data and dark and stormies and we had dj rondo on as the guest okay so almost the whole podcast was about mortgages and the uh in the housing market so i don't want to do two <laughs> podcasts in a row where we go too far down the rabbit hole i on, defer uh, to dj on on, on, on everything on mortgage yeah, yeah uh dj's great but yeah. um no so i think you bring up some really important things and and one thing that i want to touch on is is that it's it's not always what you know but a lot of times it's who you know yeah right and in relationships, when you're when you're talking about business, are are key. But a lot of those relationships spill into your personal life. Whether you're oh, buying absolutely. a home, or you need to hire a contractor, or a plumber, or whatever it may be, the person that you do business with, outside of using their service, if you do a good job for them, they're going to do a good job for you. And those relationships become more important, where they can they can benefit you outside of just hey, I've got a thing, you're going to buy my thing and give me some money relationship man well i'm bragging and i say this nicely but you know what all we do every day we, bra- we brag about people mm-hmm. brag up we brag about our clients we brag about our friends and you brag and when you're in social circles with your family you brag about whatever you got going on so so what i tell people is you know just think about who are the people you want other people to know and you create your own circle of influence so i look at t- like let's just pick 10 different industries all right in networking we meet how many industries when we go out to events so the t- common ones like banking, insurance, legal, uh, accounting, those are the easy ones, right? Right. So every time you go to an event, try to file that person. Now, I don't mean to rank them because that's bad, but file them on, on if you, like, if you, like you have, like we talked about this, you have your own CPA. Right. If you wanted another CPA or if you're, if Terry asks you for a CPA, give the, maybe you'll give the other person a chance, you know, connect them. And there's really no loss. I mean, the worst case scenario is that it doesn't work out, but you wouldn't promise Terry that it was going to work out. Right. So I try to tell people, look, I'll connect you to who you want. Go through my LinkedIn. You connect with me on LinkedIn, go through my network, look who's in my network. And if you want to connect one, write me an email why I should connect you. Right. And then I just connect them. And, and the, per- the person has to work for it anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I try to do that 10 times a week because as you said, you just got to keep doing it and one will hit because some, what's going to happen is you're going to connect Terry to someone he wants to do business with and he did business with that person. And what's going to happen online, five months online, he's going to remember you. Right. Yep. Right. And that is full circle word of mouth and it's going to continue to happen. So it's not always just about, I can do business with you. You can do business with me. It's so I will use CPA as a great example, right? Mm-hmm. So I have a CPA. I don't need a CPA. Right. But 
somebody else that I know may need a CPA. And if I meet a CPA at a networking event and I like the guy, I think he's honest, I think he's a great guy, and I'm willing to refer him, refer him to the person that I know. So yeah. then I, I introduced him and I got him business, even though I'm not the one that's, that's getting him the business. Right. It is a two-way street. So right. you are allowed to ask, hey, I hooked you up. Why aren't you hooking me up? That you mm-hmm. can do. But I think the point is, is I think during this pandemic, what I realize is a lot of people don't have what I call that, that built in pipeline, which we've been building up for networking for the years, right? Those stacks of cards, Terry, that you, that's your pipeline, right? Mm-hmm. So anyone who's starting a business today, build your pipeline first and the business will come. Right. And whatever the number is, but some people, you know, you only need two customers to survive and you're good to go. Right. I need, I need to meet 60 people. For me to get one customer. I need a lot more than two customers. But. Yeah. But I, but I mean, I have to get rejected 59 times. So right. I have to write 59 proposals before I get one customer. Right. And it takes an average of 13 weeks to get those 60 people in my network. Gotcha. Right. Wow. So that's why word of mouth is so powerful. Because if I if you refer me and I do a good job for you and you refer me, then I don't, that saved me 13 weeks of my life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that that's that's the big key. I've always thought is, is my network is, is kind of my built-in sales team. Right. And, and trying to leverage that as much as possible is, is kind of the, the key, right. Is how can I utilize my network? And a lot of times it requires some back scratching, right. I've got to do something for them to give them that impression and that, that high opinion of me so that they're willing to brag about me and bring me a, you know, a client who's already sold on working with me. Right especially in competitive spaces, printing, online advertising and marketing. It's a very, very competitive space. Real estate, all this, you know, legal, all these firms, there's so many of them. Very, there. very competitive. So it's not like, uh, you know, take low voltage technology, mm-hmm. for example, right? Yeah. There's only a few of those guys in the area, right? They don't have a lot of competition. There's there's not a, a big need to, to have those wheels greased, right? right? But when you're a printer and <laughs> if you if you throw a rock in any direction from this building, there's uh-huh. there's a printer, right? right? Yeah. It takes on even worse with digital marketing and SEO. Oh. Right. So but what so sets the printer right apart? What sets Will apart? It's customer service. Right. Customer service, experience, speed, quality. It's the personal connection. Right. You know Will, you know his wife's name, you know his kid's name. You're gonna do business with Will. And Will's gonna call you on your birthday. He's going to call you an anniversary. Otherwise, I might, Terry might call you on your yeah, birthday. But, I'm just, <laughs> but someone in your office is doing those personal touches and that's what sets you apart. I mean, because right. like you said, the cost is the same, honestly. Right. I mean, really not like always the same, but it's your deadlines. You meet your deadlines. You, you do what you say. Right. And that's what, so my thinking on the networking is there's one book I read that I was going to tell you about called Never Eat Alone. Okay. And that's how it started. I, that's how, when I started the business. It's a guy named Keith Ferrazzi. He was, used to be the chief marketing officer at Starwood Hotels, which is now Marriott. The concept is simple. If you're going to have coffee, have it with somebody you're networking with. If you're going to have lunch, have lunch with someone you're going to network with. If you're having dinner, have someone, you know, that's the whole point of it is just never eat alone. Right. No, I like that. I like that. So there was there was something that I wanted to kind of touch on, and there's an analogy that I, I, I like a lot that I think is, is very um, relevant to networking in general, but also everything that you've been saying is that um, y- you don't eat the fruit from the seeds you plant today, Correct. right? Mm-hmm. So when you go to a networking event and you meet somebody, it's not immediately going to turn into a sale tomorrow, right? Like I met a guy, now he's going to buy from me tomorrow. Like you have to establish the relationship. And, you know, so printing is an easy example. If you go online, you search for business cards, you're going to find Tampa printer, order business cards for me. Like we don't need to be friends, Right. But if you're the CEO of a large organization and you spend $150,000 a year on printing, we could be friends, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's not that, that I'm selling my friendship, but it's, it's, I'm, I, and not that I'm not willing to have relationships with people that just order business cards because I do. And I have friends that, that order for me and people that I've became friends with because they ordered from me. But, you know, it's, it's, and this is the same for every business, right? So you're going to have relationships with people that are your smaller clients and your larger clients. And, and um, they can refer you equally to smaller and larger clients. So you could have a large client 
that could refer you to somebody that only needs something that's you know a remedial thing in your world or somebody that's ordering something from you that's small that can refer you to a, a, a big client that's going to order you know $150,000 a year worth of stuff. And I've, I've actually had that happen. I had a client that was, you know, he ordered stuff every now and again, and then his wife needed needed printing, and she worked for this large organization, and he's referred her to me and we started doing their printing and now we do all of their printing and they're one of my biggest clients. So it's, it's not, don't always judge a book by its cover, right? Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't matter about what the dollars and cents are that are being exchanged in that one transaction. The, that one transaction can lead to other transactions across all kinds of different uh, platforms. And the other part of it is if you don't ask, you don't get right. A lot right. of times people say, I had coffee with them a couple of times. Well, did you ask for business? No, no, I didn't want, why not? What's the worst that can happen, right? I mean, you got to time it right. But but if, if you think about it, everyone has to, and you're, everyone needs to print something or they know someone. Right. So there's no harm in asking. And so I put it out there in the universe on social media. So back to the social media concept, I tell people what I'm looking for. So I can only have like one per industry, so to speak. So Let's say I wanted um, an, I want an engineering firm right now. I do. I need. I need. I'll put on social media. Anyone know of what? Who are my top engineers in my network? And then they'll respond. Hey, call me. Call me. Call me. I'll call them. I said, all right. And again, these are people that I already know. I already know. And an architect responded last week, and he, and he said, hey, listen, what do you what do you need an engineer for? Do you need a project? I'm like, no. I want to work with an engineer. Who do you know? He's like, well, I know five. I was like, connect with those five. Because if you don't put it out there, no one's ever going to know. Right. So don't be afraid to ask, right? You've got to ask. Yeah. You've got to ask. Squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? That's it. Now, people it. will say that, you know, your competition might be looking at your stuff or they see you. But when you go to a networking event, guess who's there? Probably your competition. Your yeah, your competition. And they're going to see who you're talking to. They're going to follow you. Yep. Right. Follow person. yep. Yep. So I think a, uh, a, a really important to thing to bring up. And, and I'm, I touched on this a little bit in, in the relationships and talking about the level of business, but I think there's also something to be said about not judging a book by its cover and how people look or how people dress. Yeah. And, and you've got a really great example of that. So um, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you the short story, right? I, I coach my son in football and you know, there's a, a dad, right. Of one of the kids. And uh, you know, I, I met him a couple of times and talked to him briefly and nothing striking right about him. And he asked me to come in and, and work on a project for his company. And, uh, you know, mind you, while he's asking me that he's in like flip flops and chicken wing sauce all over his face, drinking a Bud Light in a bowling alley. Right. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, what kind of company does this guy have, you know? And, uh, and I show up to the business and, and I'm like, whoa, like who, who are you, man? You know? And so, and you know, him, right. Know like, him. thankfully you can testify this guy exists. Right. Like, and, and, it, with me as down to earth and as nice as it gets and, and the work that I was able to do with them, I made a lot of money, right? Great, fun, cool. My experience, my, my skill set expanded. He had me do stuff that I never done before. Right. And then from there, the people within his organization that I met were able to introduce me even beyond that. Right. So it just turned into this chain, chain of, you know, a chain effect, right. That I couldn't even domino effect. Domino effect that I couldn't even like imagine looking at the guy in the parking lot at football practice. Never would have thought. But you never judged him or disliked him because of what he wore or how he looked. I'll tell you the truth. I think I liked him more. Right. <laughs> I think I was well, more willing to go in. And that's why when I go to networking events, Will, I actually look for people who are in the, by themselves. Like guys like you, who, if we didn't know each other, you'd be in the corner. Right. Because you don't want to interrupt people, right? Right. You like to stay in your lane. Right. Just be honest, right? I don't right like to stay you. in my lane, but when I'm in social situations, yeah. I'm I'm a wallflower and I interact with people that interact. But I'll with walk me. right up to you because you're probably one of the most interesting people in the room, right? Honestly, I mean that is really what happens. And so, then what I'll do is I'll break the ice with you and then get the comfort level and walk you to the click that he was talking about. Have their shoulders together and then, hey, y'all know each other. Y'all need y'all. You guys live in South Tampa. He lives in North Tampa. Why don't y'all you guys go to whatever whatever the commonality I figured out is? Right or. Hey, did you guys watch the Bucks game last night? They barely beat the Patriots. You know, like something like that. There's a commonality about Tampa, right? So, so if you can do that again, I'll, I mean, I'll close with this. If you can just set a goal for yourself for five people, try to touch five people on the networking side, whether it's through LinkedIn at an event 
or just reach out to someone like you just said, a, a person that's a client is Mario. Mm-hmm. Reach out to him. Hey, it's October. The year is ending. How you been? Yep. So networking doesn't just have to be restricted to events though, right? Like, Correct. you know, you met the guy at a bowling alley. He was your, he was on your son's football team that you were coaching. There's networking opportunities everywhere, everywhere. that you go. And it's not Publix, to Publix right? It's <laughs> not just about networking. It's also about referrals and, and meeting people and, and getting introductions. And, and again, it's about who, you know, and there's networking and networking kind of gets this bad stigma, which I think kind of comes from some of these <laughs> organizations but really it's it's about meeting people talking to people and how you can do business together and how you can help each other right Mm -hmm. and just building relationships that's Mm -hmm. what it's really all about Mm -hmm. uh well akash thank you so much for for joining us today um i i I want to i want to give you a plug i want i want everybody to know how to get in touch with you elevate is is a wonderful organization uh if you don't know about elevate elevate elevate-inc.com that's right it is but we are helping our city so our website is helping O O U R helping our city.com. Nice. Nice. Okay. So I, I can attest that Akash and, and elevate is, is an awesome organization. Kosh is a great guy. I'm a client. Um, I'm not only the president, but I'm not the president. I'm just a client, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been a, it's been an eye opening experience and, and I've learned a lot and I, I've, I've come out of my shell more than I would have in, in any other situation. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with you. And, uh, if, if, if you need help networking, reach out to Akash. I and Terry, it's that. always great to see you. Thanks for having me, Will. Gosh, <laughs> pleasure. No, it's great to meet you. To meet you. We, we just found out we went to high school near each other. Nice. Yeah, so you just connected two people that should have known each other <laughs> because you are networking as you do your podcast. Exactly. There it is. <laughs> there it is. It's beautiful. If you're a startup out there and you are thinking about starting a business, do it. Mm. Take the risk of these gentlemen here. Mm. Right. And if you need help, we'll all help you. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you next week. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Terry, and thanks, Will. Oh, 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 oh,